welcome to PC Wiz Kids Tech Talk. Today we're looking at an OCZ DDR3 4GB kit. This is the Intel XMP edition. So it comes in two 2GB modules as you can see here. These are high performance, low voltage and also of course low profile. You can see the design. Designed specifically also for the Intel P55 chipset motherboards and the 1156 socket CPUs like the Core i3, i5 and i7s. This is an XMP type of memory. So XMP for extreme memory profile, that means that it comes predefined already with these pre-overclock timings and frequencies that it's adjusting automatically for you. So you don't have to worry about, okay, if I set things up to 888.24, what is the frequency that will be stable with this CPU? It already has all of that predefined, pre-tested, and um, compatibility is not an issue. As you can see, it's using the XTC um, heatsink on it. And it won't interfere with your um, CPU coolers. I'm using the Noctua DS CPU cooler, which is pretty big. Here, as you can see, I'm booting up the machine and I got into the BIOS. 88824 is the uh, timings and it adjusts the memory ratio as well. And it's set to 1600 uh, megahertz, as you can see. You can change that to 99928 and then increase that memory ratio to like 1800 or 1900 uh, megahertz. So that's overclocked higher, more bandwidth but slower. Or you can put it to 77718, which is what I did. I set that up manually to see how far I can push this. And so basically, at 4.1 gigahertz, my machine needs stability, right? But at the same time, I want the fastest latency, the fastest I can get this machine to run. And here's the Northbridge frequency, which is pretty good. And also the DRAM frequency, like I said, running at 1600 megahertz and um, 77718, which is really nice and fast. And also, if we go into the SBD tab here, you can see the memory uh, part number there, the XMP. So it is enabled and working, and it is detecting that. And I'm making it run faster at 888. Uh, instead of 888, I'm running at 777. And look at the results I'm getting in Everest. The read, the write, and the copy. Okay, and the latency, 39.5. So as you put the values to 888, then that latency goes up. 999, it goes even higher. So that means that it's slower. But your bandwidth increases. So the read, write, and copy potentially go up and you get more uh, read, write, and copy results. So that's where you have to adjust things appropriately, right? And this automatically does all of that for you. And um, here are some comparisons between the Corsair and the Kingston so you can see how well this memory did at 77718. Terrific results. I was very pleased that the uh, system didn't crash at 4.1 gigahertz. And here is the PC Mark uh, Vantage results as well. And I compared it again with um, the other OCZ 4 gigabyte Platinum Edition that I had, and it did much better by a thousand PC Marks. So you can see here, and definitely better than the Kingston uh, running at 1600 megahertz as well. So not bad at all for these results. Now, also, I ran the Super Pi, which calculates Pi to uh, 1 million decimals, and you can see here 10.18 seconds to calculate that. And again, comparing this to other memory modules, and this time we're looking at some more high-performance modules like the Kingston HyperX, the Patriot Viper Sector 5, and the Corsair, you can see that it beat them all. 10.18 seconds compared to those other values. Terrific results, again, from this stable kit. And that's what I wanted to emphasize. This is a stable kit. You can overclock it manually or you can use the predefined profiles, which is what it's meant to do. Low voltage at 1.65 volts. Terrific results from OCZ and I definitely recommend it. So I'd like to thank OCZ for providing it and I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.